We live in a world where most of the products that we consume or use are made in a factory. In most factories, they use an assembly line. An assembly line is a series of workers and machines by which a succession of identical items are progressively assembled. In the capital city of Jackson, Mississippi, we had an incredible assembly line of coaches. Coaches like Anna Jackson, Wayne Brent, Luther Riley, and Thomas Billups, who helped make some of the greatest basketball players the state has ever seen. Players like James Hollywood Robinson, Mo Williams, Juanita Ward, and Monte Ellis, just to name a few. Where were these players assembled and made? At a place we call the JPS Basketball Factory. to deserve this. What do you mean this? I mean this opportunity to share and spend some time with this individual, this coach, someone who was born in Louisville, Mississippi. He was a graduate of Jackson State University where he received his bachelor's and his master's. He's got so many accolades, I don't have the time to read them. But he began in 1976 as an assistant coach at Vicksburg High School, won his first state championship as an assistant in 1980. Then he went on to the famous 833 Lanier High School in 1991, where for 22 years, he took them to 13 state championships, winning eight of them. His record was an impeccable 617 wins with only 119 losses. If that wasn't enough, he went to the college realm where he's been coaching for the last eight years at Tougaloo College. And he has done the same thing that he did in high school, win, where he's won two Gulf Coast Athletic Championships going to the NAA National Tournament. He is no question the standard he is no question the GOAT, and he is no question what I call the OL, the original legend. Please welcome Coach Thomas Billups. What up, Coach? Oh, I'm good. How you doing? Hey, doing great, man. Listen, I mean, you know, like I said, it's too many. I just had too many things, man, for, for, to, to just mention about you. I mean, when I first saw you, I know you don't remember this because I was just a guy coming through Jackson in 2003 and I just was actually coaching my school. And I came to Jackson, Mississippi just for a week to get away and I and uh, a guy by the name of Omar Carter, uh, I met him at a Jackson YMCA and he said, man, you need to come to the Lanier game. He told me about a kid, about Monte Ellis and I said, I went to the game with this guy who was dressed like sharp as a tack. But boy, I said, man, that's got to be the meanest coach <laughs> in my life. But man, you just got it done. Uh, talk to his coach. You know, you, you know, obviously you have a story history. And uh, the first thing I want to ask you, who was, who were some of your mentors? You know, in coach. Well, my high school coach from Louisville, Mississippi, his name Hal Hudson. Now, he was my football coach. And I played football, well, was the quarterback there at Louisville, Camille Street High School. Well, at that time, it was Camille Street High School. Uh, you know, I played football, and he weighed about 160, but he was a, hey, he was a junkyard dog, I tell you. he. He didn't take no mess, and I tell you, he, you know, it, it was tough love. You know, he had that tough love for you. You know, he gonna get it done. So that's where I got my coaching ability from. Talk to us a little bit about did you when you played at uh, you said Camille 
Camille Street High School. Did you uh, play basketball as well at uh, Camille, or you just, you know, played football? Well, believe it or not, I played a little basketball, but it wasn't much. My main sports were football and baseball and track. So you just was that athlete. What got you into basketball? Why, why did you become that legendary football coach? Well, you know, when I was in, uh, <laughs> when I was in, when I got my BS degree at Jackson State, you know, we had to do our student work, and uh, they sent me to Canton High School. You know, at that time, Canton was pretty tough and tr- pretty rough at that time. Uh, so I was doing my student teaching there, and uh, they asked me to take the ninth grade boys basketball. Didn't know a thing about it. So after they asked me, and I just went to a, a couple of clinics and started learning about basketball. So uh, after I finished at Ken, that's what made me wanted to coach basketball. But I also coached football and baseball also. I never stopped those three and track. Wow, because that, that, to be honest with you, that's what's so great about this thing, Matt. We never would have known that. Yeah. And there's not many coaches, to be honest with you, can make that transition from one sport to the next and be as great as you were. And I don't want to sound uh, too negative, but I know this may come off just, you know, like regular teachers who just decide to coach. You are no doubt, I call the original legend. And so that's, that's incredible. I, like, how did you do it? Well, I also coach, coach uh, volleyball. Didn't know a thing about it. Coach volleyball at Lanier. Went to the playoffs two years in a row. Beat, you know, when you beat Clint for the district now, you in volleyball, and I had, I didn't have any anybody but our little small black kids. And we went to the playoffs two years in a row. And my track team at, at Lanier. The, uh, one year when I coached it, we never got beat in the 400 meter relay and the 800 meter relay until we got to the championship game. Something happened at, at my school and caused one of my guys to not to be focused on what we was doing and he dropped a baton. Mm. Wow. So at the end of the day, it's, it's, I don't know who, who does that song, but all you do is win, 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 win. Because, I mean, everything that you, I mean, volleyball, who would have known? And you're right, Clinton is definitely known for volleyball. Talk to us uh, a little bit about uh, as far as you won eight state championships and you lost, so you're 85 in a state championship game. Give me your, before we give me, you tell me your best team, give me maybe your best team that didn't win the state championship. Uh, my best team that didn't win it was, uh, uh, that wasn't my best team now. Uh, Jerry Nichols, uh, we got beat by Natchez his senior year, but that wasn't my best team. That was, I mean, was that the best team that didn't win it? Yeah, that was the best team, yeah, that, that didn't, didn't win, win it. Right. Okay, now tell me, who's your best team? Like, the best team you coached at Lanier? 95, 96. And who was on that team? T.J. Billups, Shannon Lone. Uh, I had about 15 10th graders. Uh, those kids, I tell you, we were probably averaging about 103 points per game. Uh, we just... I tell you, we just destroyed everybody. You remember that year's that team record that year? I think it was thirty-six and four, thirty-six and three, or something like that. I mean, who beat you? Like, well, you know, at that point in time, you know, we went to Ken High School. Well, we didn't go to Ken High School. We we were playing Ken, but they had it at Northwest Mill School. And I tell you what. If we played our best, we would have a hard time beating them that night because they didn't miss a shot. I, I, I mean, they everything they threw up went in. Wow. Who would, uh, who 
were some of your, who would you say, now that was your best team, what would be your next best team? But we went on now. That team went on to win the state championship. So y'all did win the state championship. Yeah. And that was, the, what, what was that, 5A at that time or 6A? Uh, I think it was 5A, 5A. I believe. If that was your first, your, your, your top, you say that was your best team, what would be your next best team, you would think? 96. 96 All of them so. played together. 94, I mean 95, 96, we two-peated. We back to back. Who'd you beat in the state championship? Uh, you know what, I done beat so many people I can't even remember. <laughs> That's when you know. That's when you. I don't that's re remember. When you know that you know that you know <laughs> that you have won so many of them <laughs> that you don't even know who you beat for the state for the state championship. What was your? What would you say as far as JPS game? What was the, your most memorable JPS game that you said, man? I'll never forget this game. One can't remember the year, but it was Yazoo City. I don't know, Zach, were you playing? Yazoo City. We was number one in the state. And Yazoo City was number two in the state. That's the year I had TJ, Shannon Long. Now Shannon Long was my best player, but he was out that night. He was uh, hurt. Tane Hamilton, Corey Mangum, and, and uh, Mike O'Neill. We went to, uh, we got down at the fourth quarter. We got down by 10. It was two minutes and 49 seconds left in the game. Uh, we went to our press and we ended up catching up, tied the game, went overtime. We won by 10. That was my, the first one. The, the next two was that our district were playing at, we played our district at Indianola Gentry. We played that first night, we played South, I think it was Southeast Lauderdale. They had a kid over there named, uh, Bandia. yeah, Romero. And he was a Danny Dozen. We got down 12 points with a minute and 59 seconds to go. And at that time, I had a kid named Ariel Harden. Uh, but they fouled all my other starters out. He was the only starter that I had in there. So I went to my bench, which, you know, if I go to my bench, I want you to play just like the other kids that's on the starting team. And I called timeout. We went to our press, and I told my kids. I said, guys, well, no, Ariel came up and told me, say, Said, Coach, don't worry about it. I ain't gonna let you lose this game. So I called timeout and I told the kids, hey, get the ball in. And I don't want nobody to touch the ball but Aria Hart. And that's about that better be the only one that touched that ball. Ariel just went crazy on him. I think he hit by five threes in a row. We end up winning the game by 10. It was a minute and 59. A minute and 59. We went overtime, though. Went and we over. went, we ended up winning by 10 again. Mm -hmm. Now, when Aria, I want to go back to that moment. Aria Horton said to you, Coach, I'm not going to let you lose. Can you remember what you thought when he said that? Well, all my players say that, even when Zach then was there. Did you believe him? Did oh, you yeah. believe him? You believe at that moment. Because that I knew what they could do. I knew if you could handle my press. And I had four or five different presses. If you could handle that press the whole game, you weren't going to beat us. You know, if you could handle it. And our players just don't, didn't believe that anybody in the state of Mississippi and out of the state could not handle our press. On my right, we have an NBA champion. But before that, let's go back. He was at Murrah High School, getting it done at 1400 Murrah Drive, knocking down them jumpers. He then went on to go to Alabama where he was, I mean, all SEC. Played 13 years, as I said, in the NBA. 
and now, and then he won an NBA championship in 2016 uh, with LeBron James. He was an NBA All-Star. He can really put the ball up. I remember he had a career high of 52 points in the game. Please welcome Maurice Mo Williams, the new head coach of Jackson State University as well. And to my left, I mean, this young man was not only a high school point guard at the same school, Murrah High School, he was a Hall of Famer at MBSU, another SWAT school, but I, arguably, I believe he made one of the top five hires in college sports history that not only made an impact on the community, the HBCU community, and the world. He was a national, former national, uh, Ash National Athletic Director of the Year. Please welcome the now, the greatest AD in the country of Jackson State University, Ashley Robinson. Guys, listen, you know, it's exciting really, like I said, to be here and, you know, on the campus of Jackson State with you guys. Uh, talk to us a little bit as we do this documentary. We'll start with you, uh, uh, Ashley. Uh, talk to us a little bit about your experience at Murrah High School and how, uh, did you know uh, that you would one day and be in this position as an athletic director? Let's ask that question. Well, you know, growing up in Jackson, Mississippi, Boyle Elementary, Chestine Middle School, Murrah High School, was always a point guard, uh, always had an opportunity to lead, but was always so told she was too small, he was too short, you know, you'll never be there. So that was, you know, that was my motivation. I always was one of those guys that, you know, if you told me I couldn't do something, uh, we was gonna try to make, I was gonna try to make sure we, you know, we made things happen. And you know, coming up in, in, in my days of, of JPS and Murrow High School, you know, the whole district was full of talent. I mean, it was players all over the country. You know, Jackson was a hotbed when it came to basketball at that particular time. You know, it, you know, you compare the talent then, you had, you know, McDonald's All-Americans. You know, you had them right there that you go into classes with every day, you know. Uh, you had the Mo Williams, and you had the Jesse Pace, you had the Ronnie Hendersons, you had the Othello Harrisons, the Trey Johnsons, and I can go on and on, you know, the David Sanders, Justin Reeves, you know, and our, you know, RP Justin Reed. But, you know, doing that during my days, you know, I, I, was, I was just an all-metro guard, you know. I wasn't a dandy dozen guard, I wasn't a McDonald's All-American, uh, but I led my team. Uh, and I made sure I put the balls in the hands of the individuals that can really take you to the next level. And that's all about being a leader. That's all about, and that prepared me to be where I am today uh, when it comes to making sure you're putting people in place to be successful. And as an athletic director and as a leader, that's, that's your job. You know, we're a service. We're here to support our coaches, support our student athletes. And that's what they teach you as, you, as you, a JPS point guard, you know, uh, you know, playing for Coach Fred, playing for Coach Brown, and being around great players. Uh, you know, you know, me and Mo have a, a special relationship. You know, we've been together for a long time. But seeing his work ethics and seeing his talents, we knew, you know, that he was going to be a great player just by the things that he did off the court, you know, uh, and the work ethics that he had. But being there, you know, as, as a point guard, is, is, you know, in today's game, it's no, two, it's no more two point guards. You know, it's no more 20 assist guys, four or five points. You know, everybody want to be that combo guard. You know, everybody want to shoot the three. Everybody want to play point and two. Uh, you know, back in those days, it were true point guards back then that really led that team and put their, their guards and their fours and their centers and their teammates in position to be successful. And that's all about leadership. And that, that helped me get to where I am today. Switching to you, Mo. Now, correct me if I'm wrong, guys. You guys got to help me. You got, did you guys play together in the backcourt? Yeah. Okay, y'all's in the backcourt. Club. Let me ask you this. You know, when did you know you know, obviously he was a great player, McDonald's All-American. Uh, when did you know that, man, I think I'm gonna be a pro? I didn't really know that until um, my sophomore year in college. Now, let me, let me kinda uh, you know, go, kinda explain that. You know, my freshman year was his senior year, so I got one year to play with Ashley, um, D. Jamel, Travis, uh, Jimmy Borkins. You know, we had a hell of a team, and we weren't the best team. So that lets you know how much talent was in JPS. I mean, Provine was running things at the time. They was loaded. Lanier was good. I mean, you go down the line. So me coming in as a freshman, and at the time, Murrow never played freshman on varsity, ever. 
So I started off uh, my freshman year on the, on the ninth grade team, which we won the city, went undefeated. I did my thing, and right when the, the season's over with, they begged coach, made coach bring me up to varsity. So I ended up playing about the last 17 games with them. And when I came up, I ended up averaging 16, 17 points on varsity as a freshman. And we were pretty good, 25 and 7 or something like that. So, you know, so at the end of the day, at the end of the day, that's where my mindset changed. Because when I got pulled up to varsity, that was the first time I had a, a write up in the paper. And this is an inner city kid, straight off Hanging Moss East. You know, it's a lot of knuckleheads around. And trust me, I was kind of, you know, one of those guys just hanging with my friends and they doing all the wrong things. And when I got that right up in the paper, that gave me a, a different vision on things. That's before any camp I ever been to, that's before anything. And all that started to happen that summer. So I got a right up in the paper and started to understand, like, man, you can be something. And Bob Givens, I don't know if you guys remember Bob Givens. That was the first tournament. The first that was used to be the first big tournament. They used to do it on the campus at, at North Carolina. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Exactly. And I went to that camp with a travel team, Adidas team at the time. It was um, the New Orleans Jazz. I don't know if you guys remember that team. Me and Jay Reed, rest in peace. We, the two Jackson guys, went and played with a bunch of New Orleans guys. And I knew nothing about nothing. Went to Bob Givens. Just inner city kid, just going to hoop. I don't care about ranking. It wasn't no social media at the time, so you didn't know people. You didn't see people. Like I, I, I never feared nobody. So you in front of me, I'm finna go at you. That's what. That's what JPS being around all these guys, us playing at the air base with, with with just them big fans going. That's what catapulted me to this situation. So getting to Bob Givens, long story short, go through that tournament. I come back home. Uh, and all of a sudden, the rankings come out. I'm number three in the country. Nobody knew who I was before that. Wasn't ranked, wasn't on nothing. So that's when my mind switched. That's when I saw, like, whoa, you know, this is, this is an avenue. Like, I really can be something. Because you want to do something don't mean you're going to get it done. So I had to put in the work. So my sophomore year, and I tell this story all the time, that's when I, I, just when I got a car, that's when I started getting up on my own, going to Wild Fortification. It was open at the time. They had a track that goes around that, the uh, whole uh, property, go around the residence. It was a residence inn at the time. I don't know what it is now. Fortification's right here, and there's a track that goes all around. One lap is one mile. Just get up in the morning. Five in the morning, go up there, we run a, run a mile, run another mile, run four. Go up in the weight room, Torrance is in there at the time, he always in there lifting, so he used to work me out. Torrance may feel that is, give him a little love. Then I used to go in the gym, and at the gym, 6.30 in the morning, these are all the guys that's our age, your age now, they gotta go to work in an hour, so they playing, they pick up ball at the time. I'm the only young kid, high school kid, I play with them every single morning. I went to school. When I left school, I went back to the Y and did an individual workout by myself for an hour and a half till about 5.30. That's when all the high school kids, that's when we played. Mm -hmm. That's the first time they was in the gym. And I repeated that every single day. That was my grind. That was my goal. That kept me out the streets. That kept me away from knuckleheads or things that they was doing. So my focus shifted. That's what catapulted me to where I became my sophomore year in college. Now, to answer your question about me, the pro mindset, even going through high school, being from Jackson, you see guys, but you don't, we don't have just a bunch of guys that have a lot of success in the pros, or you don't see them on a daily basis, rather. So I never thought the NBA. I just thought it was just a way out. So I just continued to work, and I always thought that I just wasn't good enough. I never got in my mind like I'm better than everybody else. I felt like guys in the city was better or just as good as me. So my competition with guys against the city, I want to make sure I was better than everybody in the city. I ain't even talking about the surrounding areas. I'm talking about the city. So once I got McDonald's All-American, all these type things and going to college, 
Like, I never had in my mind, I'm going to leave after my sophomore year. That was never a goal. Now these guys going to school, oh, I'm one and done. They ain't played one game in college. How you one and done? How you know? So I never knew. Played my freshman year. I was freshman of the year in, in, in the SEC. I was national for AP national freshman of the year. Never thought about the NBA. Was always going back to school for my sophomore year. We was number one in the country my sophomore year. Had a good year. Was all SEC, second or third team, I can't remember. Because I never cared about none of that stuff. Then all of a sudden, that's when agents start coming in. You know, that's when that's when my pops, give my pops some love. That's when Ike started coming to me like, hey, partner, we may got some here. <laughs> you know, so, <laughs> so that's when my mind shifted to answer your question. So, like, it was never a goal. It was always a goal, but it was never something that was in the forefront of my mind. It would just always just continue to get better. And I always took that attitude with, with, when I went to the NBA. Uh, when I, people don't understand this. Yeah, I left after my sophomore year, but I was a second-round pick. You know, so I still had to go revert back to that grind mode because nothing was given to me. I could have been cutting overseas for my career if I didn't come in with the right mentality. If I came in there feeling like I deserve to be here, I'm supposed to be here, um, y'all going to give me a spot, I'm already on the team. I came with that mentality, my situation in my career could have been totally different. But I went in there with my back against the wall saying, I'm going to take, y'all don't have to give me nothing. And that's the mentality I still have today. So to answer your question, that didn't come about until my sophomore year in college. And I took off from there. Let me ask you this. You said, you know, you said something that was very interesting. Ashley was a senior. You were a freshman. You played freshman ball. You came up. So now, at the, ultimately, uh, you looked up to Ashley. Absolutely. Talk to us about a little bit about that and how did you know? I mean, I know you're probably not surprised how his how he has risen. You rose on the court. You can argue he rose off the court, uh, even though he had some success oh, no, no, on the court. No, as well. on the court. I mean, this that's when I. My, my admiration for Ashley came on the court because he was older than me. He's played the same position I played as a freshman. Y'all don't, I know y'all remember, but y'all, I'm gonna remind y'all. This is the three point line. Hey, of course, Ashley was shooting from back here. Okay. He, he was shooting from back here in high school. You know, he was getting it done. You know, with, with none of the accolades and none of the stuff people give people for doing those type of things. So he was doing that under the radar per se. And, he went on the Valley, and obviously I had my sophomore, junior, senior year. We followed each other. I followed him in school. I went, every time they came to Jackson, I was at Jackson State watching them play. So I always saw all that. And to take it one further, well, I'm, I'm going get to get to that, but just going back to high school, the leadership was in high school because the reason I was on varsity was because of our leader right. on the team because he went to coach said, hey, man, because he went at the beginning of the year before the season started and told coach to put me on ball. He don't need to be playing on ninth grade. Because I practiced with, I was practicing with them the whole time. So you saw, that that's, that was my really appointed, when you saw like him rising where he is today, being the leader he is today, he, basically you saw that. I saw that. As a freshman when he was a senior, yeah. him doing that Absolutely. and being able to go to the That's coach. the reason I was on varsity. That, that's the point I'm making. Because of his persistence. Because of Coach saying no at first and going back to Coach saying, no, nah, Coach, this is what we need. This is going to make us better. We're trying to get over the hump. That's what leaders do, right? And getting back to just far as leadership in college. Like, we saw this. His senior year at Valley, which I was blessed my freshman year at Alabama, his senior year at Valley, first game of my, my first collegiate game was against Mississippi Valley State. I had 25 wow. points. He had a double-double with 10 assists and 10 points. Wow. First game. So, our, you know, our relationship is, <clears throat> is, 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 I mean, we, we, we share blood together. Right. You know, we share blood together because we've been through a lot together. We've supported each other in both of our rides. Right. You know, uh, and I let him tell the story. I remember when he wanted to come, become an AD and get in administration. I remember the conversation we had. And we got a group of friends at the time, and I supported them. And our group of friends was like, oh, man, you gonna beat them. Come on, what is this, man? Come on, man. Get on with that, man. You know, so when he's, like he said, when he say he want to do something, going to do it, and when people laugh or say he, he ain't going to be able to do it, 
Yeah, just sit back and watch. You'll get it done. You know, uh, Ash, uh, one of the things, who, when, when you look back at JPS in, in high school, who were some of your mentors that helped shape you? You know, obviously you hear Mo talk about your leadership skills. Who's the one in, you know, you can look back and point it to help you as far as help you mentor you in your leadership ability? Who was, the, who was that role, that person that you looked up to? You know, you know, back then, you know, my, my, my father, of course, uh, was a great, you know, great mentor for me. Uh, and you know, a story of my father, you know, we actually grew up in Bolton, Mississippi. My mom got married when I was in the fifth grade and we ended up moving to Jackson and going to board in Chestane. And you know, he always taught me, it was one thing he used to always tell, tell me, he's like, big time players make big time plays. Uh, and he's like, son, if you want to be a big time player, you got to make big time plays. You got to make that shot when it count. You got to make that decision when it count. And that's something that stuck with me. And, and another thing that stuck with me is, in order to be great, you got to do something that's never been done before. Uh, and that's, those are two things that stuck, you know, by my side when it came to people that I really, you know, looked up to and, and saw some of the things that people done. Because I was always the person that, man, you too short. I mean, ain't no way you finna play basketball. You know, a, a story, you know, I, I get to play ninth grade year, uh, go to 10th grade, Coach Frick comes over to Murrow, and I get cut my 10th grade year. I only played one year of high school basketball in Murrow. I played ninth grade year, got cut my 10th grade year, was around my 11th grade year, and only played a full year my 12th grade year at Murrow because it was always, you know, you, you too short, it's, you know, you got cut, I got cut in chest stain, same way, but I kept driving, kept going. And everybody off that team, you know, me and D. Jamel Jackson, you know, I played in times with uh, Richard Bradley coming up. That player that I really liked coming up at Merle, Addo Hudson. I mean, Addo people Hudson. don't remember Addo Hudson. I think he's, he's in Atlanta now. I mean, Lefty. that's left-hand guard, six foot. I mean, I'm in the ninth grade, he's in the 11th, 12th grade. And I mean, when I come up to Merle, you know, the Addo Hussons and uh, Bo Clarks, which is the head coach at Lanier right now. Uh, who else was on that team? Uh, Othello, uh, not Othello, Sam Funches. Yep. You know, that, that's, that's, that was when I came first came to Merle. So seeing them guys, I'm like, wow, I'm walking down the hall with Addo Hudson coming over from, from Chestane. So those are the guys. There's always was a different group of guys at Merle that, you know, that really put you in. I'm like, when I get 11, 12th grade, that's who I want to be. You know, so that, Addo was one of the guys that I really looked up to when it came to, to basketball, you know, coming over to Merle High School. You know, you bring up a point, and, you know, we always hear the famous, mm -hmm. Uh, Michael Jordan got cut story, you know, you know, Michael, he just got cut from varsity. He didn't get cut from the team. He just played JV. But you, that was very interesting, you know, because, you know, I've, I've heard about how great a player you were. And the fact that you didn't play your junior year is, is, is amazing. So let's go. I, I like to know this. You came in with an, it was a new coach. And, you know, one of the things I see in uh, today's with athletes, the parents don't allow kids to go through adversity. Mm -hmm. Normally what they would do in a situation like that is what? Transfer, mm -hmm. you know, so you stayed true to Mara, didn't transfer, you got cut. What was the driving factor be between that? Because you had to have, you know, some dislike for Coach Frick for, for, for I mean, you're human, for cutting you. What made you decide, and you know, to, did you ask your parents about, my I, I gotta leave, did you even, did you make that well, one, one thing that clear, and, that, and that's that's the difference between, you know, when we grow up more, more in, and the players then and now. Mm -hmm. You know, you weren't going home talking about, I'm finna transfer and I'm finna leave. Uh, you know, the question gonna be, well, you must finna leave here too. You know, <laughs> so the, the parent, you know, my parents, you know, played a big role. So you need to get out there and do what you need to do if that's what you wanna do. You know, I grew up off West Street, St. Francis, it was two or three houses dead in. We put a goal up on the tree, and, and that's what that's what we worked out at, you know. And we over the summer we had opportunity, you know, to go to the Y and the YMCA's, and that that's another thing, you know, that was very big back in the day too. We had a lot of places we can go, uh, you know, and programs that was in the city, that you know, like the YMCA's, you know, the air base that Mo talked about earlier. You talk about the NYSP programs, you talk about the upper bound programs. I mean, none of those programs are here now. You know, you go back and you ask the question, what are these kids doing now? And that's why, you know, that's one of my initiatives is being an athletic director. And that's why I tell people, being, being in Jackson as the AD, 
it's bigger than a job to me. This is the city I grew up in. You know, you want to see the city being successful. You want to see some of the things you have and the camp that we're having now. You know, I, I walked up and I see 14 to 15 shoe buses out there. You know, I walk in the gym and I see, you know, three courts of, of teams playing. You know, we don't, that's not happening now. You know, when we played, that's what we did every single day. I mean, it wasn't a time that we was gonna wake up and not play. You take a basketball from us, it's like you done took our life from us. Playing 21. Yeah, oh, that's yeah. Like that's like nobody plays 21 that's, anymore. That's a punishment. Yeah. When your mama say, hey, son, you ain't gonna be able to play basketball. What you need me to do? I clean the whole house up. What, I mean, what it is. You know, now these kids are totally different now. We have to do more motivating these kids to play now than then. You take a ball from us, you say we can't play basketball. I mean, we ain't doing nothing. You know, I tell people, basketball is one of the reasons why I got an education. You know, because I, want, I was going to make sure whatever requirement it was to play basketball, I was going to do it. Yeah. Because that's how bad I wanted to play basketball. That was my way out. That was my way of showing everybody, okay, you say I'm too short, meet me on the court. You know, my name Ashley. So, you know, you, you first to second grade, you get up, how my name Ashley. Everybody, hey, this boy name Ashley, meet me on the court, come on. <laughs> you know, so that, that was my motivation, you know, and those are the type of things that really, you know, keep me going. So even with being here, you know, coming back here in, in 2018 and, and mm -hmm. you know, I t everybody's like, hey, you're coming back home. JPS is the reason why, you know, I, I talk about this all the time. You know, you got women's basketball JPS. You got men's basketball JPS. You got the band director at Jackson State JPS. You got the president of Jackson State JPS. I mean. That shows you a lot what JPS has done for the city. Now we're able to give back to the city. JPS don't owe us anything. We owe JPS everything. And we got to change those mindsets of our peers, you know, our, our teammates, our players, so we can start to give back. And, and the things, just like what Mo and Tamika is doing here at Jackson State, we're giving back to our city. And we're showing that people, it can be done in Jackson, Mississippi. And the only way, you know, you look at the city of Jackson, when the last time the city of Jackson has, has really been on fire? I mean, what, what can you go where 50,000 people can come in and watch something? I mean, so we got people that grew up in Jackson, we got people that went to JPS, and now we're able to get back to our communities, and that's keep some of their local talent here in the city of Jackson. Because I tell you, when I played, if everybody came to Jackson State, you talking about a Final Four team. But we gotta change those mindsets. So now we're changing these kids' mindsets, and we're changing parents and how we think about staying at home and supporting our own. But, but we have to do our part too. As administrators, as coaches, I tell coaches all the time, we have to do our part. We can't take it for granted that, you know, they're gonna come or we don't have to go talk to them. I, my, you know, and Mo had his mindset, five star, six star, wherever you are, I'm gonna talk to you. Cause you know what, you gonna come back. If you, even if you do leave, but we had this mindset of, we can't get that kid. Yeah, we can, you know, so, it's just changing perception, and that's that's some of the things that JPS really did for us. And now you start seeing the success of JPS players, administrators, coaches. I mean, JPS got a really good history, but we gotta and we gotta make sure that we get back to that and start showing people and speaking the same language and showing people what we're doing.